I suppose it's time for me to weigh in on this. BLM founder is branded a fraud after buying a $1.4 million home. A Black Lives Matter co-founder and self-professed trained Marxist has raised eyebrows by purchasing a $1.4 million Los Angeles home in a largely white district. Patrice Cullers, a 37-year-old artist, organizer, and freedom fighter, has bought a three-bedroom, three-bathroom house in Topanga Canyon, complete with a separate guest house and an expansive backyard. You know where Topanga Canyon is, and it is very white. <laughs> in the hills, very exclusive, actually. The home is described in the real estate listings as having a vast, great room with a vaulted and beamed ceiling. The realtor writes that the large backyard is ideal for entertaining or quietly contemplating cross canyon vistas framed by mature trees. It, it, actually, Topanga Canyon is actually where a lot of porn stars used to live back in the day, the ones that actually made it. The AP reported that Black Lives Matter took in $90 million in donations last year. It's not clear if or how Couriers is paid by the organization as its finances are opaque. Patrice Couriers, seen accepting Glamour's Woman of the Year Award, has a new home. Her new zip code is 88% white and 1.8% black, according to a census. The house is only 20 miles from her childhood home in Van Nuys, but is a world away. That's very true. In 2018, in her memoir, she tells of being raised by a single mother with three siblings in an impoverished neighborhood where she lived in a two-story, tan-colored building where the paint was peeling and where she, there is a gate that does not close properly and the intercom system that never works. I wonder where that is. Patrice Coolidge is talking on a cell phone. Coolidge grew up in Van Nuys, the neighborhood of L.A., which she described as impoverished. Some critics argued that living in a million dollar home was at odds with their social justice mission. Vallejo for Injust Social Injustice, a movement that describes itself as abolition plus socialist collective in the struggle for liberation, self-determination, and poor working class solidarity said it was an ill-judged flaunting of wealth. I would agree. We're talking generational wealth off the deaths of, and struggle of black folks here, they tweeted. Justice Team Network's and BLM founder paid $1.4 million for a home. This past week, we bought a cot for our unhoused black elder friend to keep him off the ground. One LGBTQ described BLM as a racket. Hmm. Wow. Jason Whitlock, a sports journalist, tweeted that she had a lot of options on where to live. She chose one of the whitest places in California. She'll have her pick of white cops and white people to complain about. That's a choice, bro. Author and activist Andy Ingo tweeted, Kulis identifies as a communist and advocates for the abolishment of capitalism. Paul Joseph Watson, a British YouTube host, said she chose to live in one of the whitest places in California. Tucker Carlson on Friday told his Fox News viewers that Twitter had even begun taking down reference to the property. Carlson noted that Whitlock posted a Twitter link to the original story about the property on the celebrity property blog the dirt he posted this on his twitter he made the obvious point what what happened his account had been locked by twitter in other words there's a lot of stuff going on with this lots of twitter posts it is unclear if colors is paid by the group which is currently cleft by deep divisions over leadership and funding colors co-founders have left and last summer colors assumed leadership of black lives matter Global Network, the national group that oversees the local chapters of the loosely arranged movement. Cooler's move has not been un universally welcomed, Politico reported in October. Local organizers in told Politico that they saw little or no money and were forced to crowdfund to stay afloat. Some organizers say they were barely able to afford gas or housing. BLM's Global Network filters its donations through a group called Thousand Currents. Insider reported in June, which made it even more complicated to trace the cash. And this goes on and 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 on. But you get the point. I already told you this was a astroturf organization. And I can't knock her hustle. I can't knock their hustle. They've all been paid. I do believe one of the organizers actually made a car commercial that was widely 
uh, disparaged. Okay. And these are supposed to be people that are uh, Marxist, socialists, right? And uh, sometimes they say some of the best socialists or Marxists make the best capitalists. And so far, they're acting like a capitalist. They're acting like a p political capitalist. And they're cashing in. So like I said, uh, they got paid. Uh, they say that BLM made uh, almost $100 million this year, supposedly. Uh, but there's reports where they have made $10.7 billion worldwide. So I don't know which one it is, but uh, but this is a billion dollar organization. And uh, she's over the uh, past few years, she has acquired like six pieces of property, probably totaling like $10 million or so, maybe even more. Uh, there was an article in the New York Post where they went back and they basically listed a lot of the properties that she's acquired. That just this one, this Patrice acquired. Now, I don't think her book sold enough for her to start buying property like this. I don't, you know, I, I don't expect people to take a vow of poverty. Uh, but this is kind of like a slap in the face to uh, local organizers that of grassroots campaigns. Now, in my estimation, if, it'd be one thing if she bought her a modest house someplace in, in Los Angeles. And there's plenty of places in Los Angeles. Doesn't have to be Topanga Canyon, right? Topanga Canyon is a very ritzy neighborhood, not quite Bel Air or Beverly Hills, but it is a fairly uh, ritzy neighborhood. Uh, a lot of movie stars have moved to Topanga Canyon. But I've said all along um, that this organization was not what it seemed to be. I've said or, you know, over the years that this organization is actually owned by more wealthier entities in the United States looking to gain political power. And uh, this is just their reward for doing what they do. So like I said, the, for the powers that be, this gamble has paid off. And so this is uh, the founders collecting the reward and leaving the other people in the lurch. So I fully expect her to cash out and basically hand off this, this organization to somebody else. But it is what it is. And, you know, uh, this is something that we kind of, exposed like maybe uh just before the election last year maybe like in the summer of last year we had we had seen this before we had actually seen the articles before about them being a not so grassroots organization and being funded by a lot of big corporations and this was like we, i think we did this in like 2016 and 2017 they talked about BLM and and who their donors were and to look out for them. And people still you know, got behind them. It is what it is. I'm like, shout out to them. Um, and George Floyd was was their moment, a moment to shine and a moment to actually exercise and take power. And to the victor go the spoils. And these are just the spoils. So uh, you look through her. Uh, just the slides of just the house, very nice house. You know, for a three bedroom, extremely nice house. Uh, and uh, I wish it were me. <laughs> it's good to be her and sucks to be me, right? But uh, I, I'll put a link in the description because Dr. Johnson actually broke this down on his page, on his video. And uh, it's classic rant. Dr. Johnson doesn't often do rants. He doesn't often take out the uh, the bat left and start swinging, but he did on this video. So I would highly suggest that you go over to his page, go to his channel and look at the video he did. 30 minute video on Black Lives Matter. And uh, Dr. Johnson is an activist himself and works in that arena and works around these kinds of people. And, and even uh, he might even give a little inside baseball peek into how this thing functions how it's supposed to function so but uh, uh me being a an amoral pragmatist i see them for what they are and i see them for what what use they have to certain powers uh, i've named them before but i mean if you go back in my archives you can actually find you know the names and the in the list of donors and stuff like that and they their people won they got their people that they wanted to in power into positions of power in politics and that's what they're paid to do and they've paid off and so like i said the victor goes to spoils they're cashing out as we speak but hopefully black folks have now realized that 
all that glitters is not gold and everything green is not grass. Take that to heart and peep game. But with that, I'm going to close this one out. This is BGS out and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.